Now I know not everyone needs tips on actual production tying, but the single best way to learn how to tie a new fly, become more efficient, and to fill your fly boxes for the next season as quick as possible, you need to tie a bunch of one fly pattern at a time, which is basically production tying. So whether you're a production tire or not, we're going to give you some tips in this video that will help you bust out a ton of flies as quick as possible. <laughs> so the first tip is, seriously, tie one pattern at a time. This stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> Wooly Bugger Flyco. Ow, oh, that coming. Such cool stuff. <laughs> that trick never gets old. Wooly Bugger Flyco, thanks for the swag. I'll drop a link in the description below for all this stuff. Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. But to really stay organized, efficient, and, and to get the most out of your time at the vise, Tying one fly over and over and over is going to be the only way to go. If you start with a hare's ear and then you bounce to a copper john and then you jump to a sex dungeon, yeah, I mean, you're gonna tie all those flies, but if you tied a dozen hare's ears and then you went to a dozen copper johns and then you went to a dozen sex dungeons, those flies will get better and better and better as you progress and you won't have as much clutter on your desk there's so many good things that happen when you start to tie just one fly at a time in numbers. Tip number two, tie with the best quality tools that you can afford. But we've all been there. We've had that bobbin that had a burr in it that kept breaking your thread. We had scissors that went dull. We had a, we had bodkin that wouldn't, bodkin? But the point is, there's nothing more frustrating than having tools that don't work properly while you're tying, especially when you're tying in numbers. Any little thing that throws off your mojo is not a good thing at all. So take care of your tools, store them correctly whenever you are not using them. Whether you use a VW pouch or you, you put your tools in a tool caddy, whatever that is, take care of the tools that you're using so they last longer, therefore they don't go bad on you and frustrate the hell out of you. <laughs> Tip number three. Three, <laughs> lighting. Adequate lighting makes a massive, massive difference in how you tie flies, how well you tie flies, and how much eye fatigue and, and everything you end up getting, especially when you get up there like my age. Trust me, it's a big thing, it really is. <laughs> Now the good thing is, just like tools, lighting now is as cheap as it's probably ever been. I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, there was a specific light company that I'm not gonna mention that had the fly tying light. And it was like 100, 150 bucks. And and yeah, no, I, I wasn't gonna get that. So I literally had like desk lamps and stuff like that that worked just fine. But when I stepped up to a better light, like like the LEDs that we have now, um, it, it's done so much better for me. Now I'm really lucky that this is, this is where I tie and I have studio lighting and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm really lucky, but I still have two cheap lights on my desk all the time that are specifically for tying. One is an Ikea desk lamp that, that does really, really well. It's, it's super affordable, uh, sits on your desk and uh, uh, nothing to it. Very, very easy, works great. The other is a clamp that is a little bit longer and covers more of my tying area. Um, it's by color and stuff like that. I'll link both of these in the description of the video, but just trust me when I say finding adequate lighting is massive. It means so much. It really, really does. Store your materials together and always in the same spot. Now there are several ways to do this. I've seen people use 
three ring binders. I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff. But the style I've landed on lately is to use the Loon bench rings. These things. I think I have 12 or 15 different colors of ice dub here and like a load of laser dub here. Um, if you keep all of the material you're looking for in all the colors in one spot where you can go grab one thing off the shelf or pull it out of a drawer or whatever, that's going to help you so much. That, that way you don't have to go through a, a bunch of different things trying to find the right color of dubbing and it could be the wrong kind of dubbing so you have to bounce around. There's no sense in that. Find a way to keep all your materials together. And also for my setup behind me, the the crazy shelf, uh, I've landed on these. They're actually refrigerator organizers. Um, they are just plastic bins that hold a load of stuff. Look at all these rabbit strips. Like, like I don't know. I've got, I, I couldn't tell you. I don't want to turn that upside down. <laughs> I did drop one anyway. But when I get ready to tie a drop for like a, a knucklehead or a, a knuckle deep, I know exactly where I need to go to get all the materials I need for whatever color I want. And I don't have to guess where anything is. I go straight to it. It's all in one spot. It's the best thing you can possibly do. So moving on to more specifically like bigger streamers now. If you're going to tie numbers of articulated streamers, the best way to tie them is in steps. So the way I do it, if, if I'm going to tie two dozen knuckleheads, I'm going to tie the rear hook first in all of them. So I'll tie 24 rear flies before I move on to the next step at all. Then I'll articulate it, I'll tie the front hook onto all 24 of those. Then I'll tie the body of the front, and then at the very end I'll tie 24 heads in a row. I started doing this whenever I got sick of not being really good at deer hair. And I was, I was struggling a little bit with uh, like a sex dungeon head and, and stuff like that. I just wasn't really good at deer hair. So what I forced myself to do was tie dozens and dozens of sex dungeons. And I would tie them all up to the head and then I'd set them aside. And then I would tie like 50 heads in a row. And by the time I was done with that, I was starting to get the hang of things. And then I realized, well, you know, this is the best way that I could do this for all my patterns. Started doing it this way and it was the best thing I've done. Which leads me to the giveaway in this video. Which is which is actually really cool. <laughs> the Fly Hub XL is is actually a really neat item. It's it, the simplicity of this thing is what makes it so good. There are 16 magnets around the top of this thing that will hold a fly for every step that you are working on. So if you're working on the rear hook of 16 different flies, you can throw them on here whenever you're done with that, that portion and it's gonna hold it. They're not gonna be laying around anywhere, stuff like that. This is one of those things that I wish I had thought of. <laughs> this thing is very lightweight. Uh, it doesn't take up a ton of room on your desk. Uh, it's it's really, really cool. I, I'm I'm enjoying it and it's, it's helping me keep the stuff off my desk. I've always used magnets, which is what this thing uses, but I've hung them in different spots and then they get funky. It's just, it just doesn't work very well. This works fantastic. The magnets are super strong. Um, it's super, super cool. And Preston sent one for me to give away to one of you. So comment on this video of what fly you will tie in a production setting. Go follow PM Wood Studio on Instagram. And we're going to give away one of these things to you guys, you know, and I'll probably throw in a knucklehead or something. So yeah, he actually did something a little extra on mine, <laughs> which is super cool. Um, yeah, go check them out. So tie big flies in steps and your flies will be more consistent and consistency equals swim. That really does. So the next tip on tying bigger flies is to pre-cut as much of your materials as you possibly can. So if you're going to tie 50 knuckle deeps, you're going to cut a hundred rabbit strips. The first 50 being about four inches long and the second 50 being about two and a half inches long. That way, when you get ready to tie the next fly, you don't have to stop and cut and do everything like that. Everything's ready. And I guess, and, and honestly, this goes for tying nymphs as well. Just generally have your materials ready. 
have the materials that you need at your fingertips. Um, not in the package. Take, take your dubbing completely out of the package. But I will have only the materials that I'm using on my desk at any given time. And I will have as many of those cut and ready to go. So I can just grab them, tie them on each step as I go. That's just, it's just the way it works. It's, it's so much better, so much more efficient. Um, you get more done with less amount of time. So if you've ever seen me at a show or anything like that, you've seen me bring this thing around everywhere I go. My buddy Justin Spencer gave it to me several years ago. This was, this thing is probably 10 years old. Um, but it is a, basically it holds everything. I probably have, I probably have a thousand hooks in here right now. They're all labeled, crudely labeled <laughs> with some electrical tape and, and like, I don't know. Basically what I'm getting to is get your hooks out of the package. As, as soon as you get them, find somewhere to put all your hooks, whether it's a, a hook holder of some kind specifically or some kind of organizational thing. And you'll find yourself just grabbing this and finding a dozen or 50 hooks that you need right now, rather than messing with the packaging on these hooks. Yeah. So the last couple of things are just kind of fun. I, I'm a big music guy. I listen to a lot of music and I'm going to go ahead and put my Spotify playlists in the description of this video. Um, go check them out. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of them. I'll be honest. But yeah, I listen to a lot of music and uh, watch a lot of sports and stuff like that when I'm tying flies. So uh, that's, that's, that's kind of a big thing for me. And honestly, A little Woodford never hurt either. <laughs>